Our first speaker this morning is Dr. Vahakan Shahinian, and I think I actually said that correctly. Dr. Shahinian is a transplant neurologist and health services researcher and an associate professor of medicine at the University of Michigan. He currently serves as co-investigator on three large national projects funded by the CDC, the Veterans Administration, and the NIDDK. These projects are tasked with examining the epidemiology, quality of care, and outcomes for patients across the spectrum of kidney disease using administrative and electronic health record data. He begins our day with his speech, Surveillance for CKD and End-Stage Renal Disease in the U.S., Opportunities for Improvements in Care. Dr. Shannon. Okay, good morning. Uh, so, um, first off, let me uh, thank Claudine, obviously, for making this all possible, and thank you all for, for attending. Um, so, um, as Tim mentioned, I'm, I'm faculty uh, at the University of Michigan, a transplant nephrologist and health services researcher. I'm also a member of the Kidney Epidemiology Cost Center, which we refer to as CAC, which is a multidisciplinary group of people, including faculty, data analysts and programmers and project managers that have done a lot of the work behind the, the projects and the data that I'll be presenting. Uh, I'm also one of the uh, uh, deputy directors for the USRDS. Uh, Bruce Robinson is the other deputy director and Rajiv Saran is the um, director of the USRDS. So um, what will I be talking about? Um, this is kind of an overview. It doesn't necessarily have everything in order, but some of the ideas I wanted to convey is, number one, what is surveillance? I use that term in the title. Um, and it's kind of borrowed uh, from one of the projects that's funded by the Centers for Disease Control. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that because I like the way they frame the problem of kidney disease. I'm going to give an overview of the three kind of three large national kidney disease projects, including the USRDS, a CDC funded project, and a Veterans Affairs or VA funded project. I'm going to give a uh, overview of national trends in, in chronic kidney disease and end stage renal disease. Um, and just a few, a handful of areas. Uh, where uh, certainly at the 10,000 foot level, we can identify potential problems that could be areas to target uh, for improvement in, in patients with kidney disease. And along the way, uh, mentioning some of the lessons learned and challenges that, that, that we met in trying to uh, kind of utilize the data we have to, to, to identify these trends. So since I'm the first speaker, I think it's important to just go through very briefly uh, some definitions. So end-stage renal disease, or ESRD, um, some people will call that ESKD, or for kidney disease, um, and that includes anybody who essentially needs renal replacement therapy, and that comes in the form either of dialysis, of which there's a number of varieties, or transplantation. Chronic kidney disease, uh, or CKD, um, has as its formal definition uh, reduced glomerular filtration rate or ki reduced kidney function or the presence of kidney damage, which is often indicated by the presence of spillage of protein in the urine for at least three months. So technically speaking, to call it chronic, that's the chronic component, <coughs> excuse me, is the requirement for it to have been present for at least 90 days. And there's different stages of it, which I, you know, I'm not going to get too much into details, but essentially five is, is bad or close to dialysis. Um, one and two represent scenarios where you've got evidence of kidney damage, but your GFR is not necessarily reduced below 60. And then three and four represent different levels of reduction in, in your um, kidney function. The other thing which I'm not going to talk uh, at all about, but I think it's important to bear in mind in the broad view of kidney disease is acute kidney injury, or AKI, and this is increasingly recognized as particularly important. It's something that we certainly are beginning to track more and more in some of these kidney disease projects, and because it is 
um, something that is much more likely to happen in patients who have underlying chronic kidney disease, but also it's a risk factor for subsequently going on to develop chronic kidney disease. So acute kidney injury is when you have a sudden drop in your kidney function, often because, for example, you have an infection or something like that. So um, as part of talking about or, or transitioning to talking about surveillance, um, one of the things uh, is that uh, you know, kidney disease can be viewed as a public health problem. Um, and number one, as I'll show you some data for, there's a very large health burden on society. Um, patients with kidney disease have all sorts of medical issues, a high rate of hospitalization, very high rates of mortality. There's reduction in quality of life. And again, I'll have one slide just showing the cost. It's a, it's, there, there is a tremendous cost in this population of patients. The other thing uh, that I won't, again, show on, um, uh, in terms of the, the trends, uh, but there'll be a talk on it, I think Deirdre uh, Cruz will be touching on this, is that kidney disease is something where there's certainly uh, disparities in outcomes, disparities in care related to kidney disease. Um, uh, and then finally, and I think um, this is probably, you know, one of the, the themes that, that I'll kind of come back to at the end, is that uh, we probably need to do more upstream in the form of prevention, both primary prevention, meaning before people get kidney disease, people who have risk factors for kidney disease, but also in early stages of kidney disease, trying to prevent progression. Um, you'll see the outcomes are quite bad once people get to advanced kidney disease and, and end-stage renal disease. So this is where this kind of public health view that focuses on prevention, I think, is key. So I use the term surveillance. Um, and so what is public health surveillance? And this is a quote from a, an article that, uh, kind of a seminal article that reviews this concept. But it's the ongoing systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation of health data essential to the planning, implementation, and evaluation of public health practice, closely integrated with timely dissemination of data to those who need to know. So this is just a, a um, kind of a conceptual model. You, you, need to, you need to get the data. You need to put it in some kind of analyzable form to derive the appropriate interpretation and then get it to the people who can start to act on it. And then you need to continue the cycle to see, you know, if the actions have led to improvements and where you need to continue to put resources and where you continue to do, need to do work to improve the, you know, the ultimate uh, outcome. And so uh, a few more words about public health surveillance. So historically, it's applied to infectious disease. That's initially um, the largest focus, say, for the Centers for Disease Control. But increasingly, uh, the idea is being applied to chronic disease conditions, diabetes and also kidney disease. Um, and again, you know, some of the uses for putting it in this term and monitoring various aspects of a, a chronic disease condition is that so that you can track the burden of disease, understand and get your hands around the magnitude of the problem, be able to monitor what's happening, how care is being delivered. Um, if you make any changes, um, you know, you can monitor to track for any improvement in outcomes. And also, to a large extent, it's also important to generate hypotheses and stimulate further research. So tracking patterns of disease can also give you some insights about what may be uh, the underlying causes of the disease. And some of the data sources that can be used, and you'll see examples of this throughout the rest of my talk, are uh, you know, formal health surveys where there's a specific um, kind of design to go out and ask people questions or gather data from them. Um, registries uh, of, of disease patients, you'll see examples of that. What I'm calling information systems where you leverage healthcare data 
to get some of the information you need. And then there are some aspects that can really only be done in a research context, so cohort studies, where the only way you can get the information is through, a, you know, kind of a detailed research design approach. <laughs> So I'll start with some of the project, and there's three. And one is the United States Renal Data System, the USRDS. Just by a show of hands, who has heard of the USRDS? Okay, so most people, and I, I would kind of expect that. Um, for the USRDS, it's one of the longest standing of the projects I'm going to be talking about. It was initiated in, in 1988 in response to the growing size and cost of the ESRD population. And essentially, um, certainly is how it started, is a registry of ESRD patients. And this was possible because um, essentially, and this, goes, this actually dates back to 1973, all patients who require renal replacement therapy are eligible for uh, coverage by Medicare. And because of that, all patients, regardless of their primary insurance, have to submit a registration form to Medicare, the 2728 form for those who may know. Um, and because of that, we're able to identify the vast majority of patients who become end-stage renal disease patients in the United States. So we have essentially a full capture of those patients. And a lot of the work that's done is supported by the NIH, by the NIDDK in particular, um, as well as M Medicare itself, CMS. And we track trends in the incidence, prevalence, mortality, costs, and various aspects of care and outcomes. And again, I'll show you a few aspects of that. Um, um, there are uh, annual data reports produced. They're available on a website. They're also more recently being published um, online in, in American Journal of Kidney Diseases. Um, the USRDS also provides the data uh, in, in a researchable form for those who, are, who have the resources to do that. And most recently, that data is actually free uh, 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 of charge. Um, uh, the, the other thing it does is it provides linkage to researchers who want to link their own cohorts of patients to the USRDS in order to get accurate ascertainment of the development of ESRD. Uh, beyond just ESRD, it's also, since 2008, um, introduced an entire volume on, on chronic kidney disease as well. And a number of data sets are used, and this will be a theme in the other project I mentioned as well, um, to get at various aspects. So Medicare claims CramWeb, which is a web-based uh, form for data submission for dialysis facilities to Medicare. Uh, Clinformatics, which is a uh, essentially a commercially available data set uh, that's provided by a large uh, healthcare insuring organization, provides information on patients who are um, uh, essentially have have health insurance through their employer and potentially their dependents. Veterans Affairs data, which I'll show a little bit of, and then uh, NHANES, which is um, again, many of you may have heard, but it's a large national survey, the, the national um, uh, survey. So um, it, it, it's not specific to kidney disease. It looks at various aspects uh, of, of, uh, of, of health, um, and, but it provides data in the form of lab data, uh, serum creatinine, which allows us to get at kidney disease, and therefore it's been used um, uh, substantially at providing uh, kind of an estimate of the national burden of, of kidney disease. So the other project is the CDC CKD surveillance system. And this was started in 2006. It's been a joint effort by teams at University of Michigan, uh, that's uh, Rajiv Saran, and then Neil Poe is the other principal investigator, originally at, at Hopkins, and he's since moved to uh, UCSF. And the idea, again, is to take more of a public health approach to CKD with more of a focus on the kind of the um, uh, upstream uh, aspects of it and preventive aspects. And uh, as part of that, um, as part of that project, we identified 
several major topics to look at. And this just gives a, a breadth of the, the, the idea of the breadth of topics that are examined within the project, including looking at the burden of, of, of kidney disease or the prevalence, the incidence, awareness of it by the healthcare system, but also by patients, various processes and outcomes, health system capacity, so the availability of, of nephrologists, um, and then the health consequences, mortality. And, and then here to emphasize the preventive aspect, we also track the risk factors for kidney disease, like you know how many people have diabetes, for example, and age as well. Uh, age is certainly a risk factor for, for having reduced kidney function, and as the population ages, we're going to have more people with reduced kidney function. So as opposed to ESRD, where we have a registry where we can capture virtually all patients, chronic kidney disease is much harder to get a handle on. There's no national database of kidney disease patients. So we need to use an amalgam of different data sources to try to get some kind of flavor for what's, what's happening across the country. Um, and we do that by using different, these data, different data sources, some of which I've already mentioned. So, you know, uh, employer-based insurance data to get at a younger employed population. Um, the Medicare population uh, is, is, is older and sicker, um, and we have claims information from them that we can look at. Um, you know, Medicaid is something the, the project has not used yet, but is planning to. Um, which again has claims data um, to identify kidney disease potentially. Um, and again, that has a, a whole different kind of a population, uh, kind of an underinsured population, a more vulnerable population. Um, we have registries to get the kind of the end state renal disease component. The SRTR is a transplant patient registry. Um, and then the population surveys, um, including N. Haynes and, and Berthus, um, which are surveys of patients to identify, um, again, kidney disease, but a whole bunch of other things as well. Um, and then cohort studies. So we bring all that information together to get a snapshot of what's happening across the country in kidney disease, uh, even though we're not really looking truly at national data because it, we don't have it. And... Uh, website was launched in um, uh, November of 2012. Um, if you just Google CDC CKD, you'll you will get to it. How many people have been on this website or know about it? Mostly this table over here. Uh, so uh, this is an opportunity for me to make a plug. Uh, so CDC CKD in Google will get you there. Uh, and this this provides a lot of uh, the the information that uh, you know we derive from analyzing those data sets. And then finally, um, and, and this one really probably is off the, off the grid, so to speak, a little bit. Uh, um, uh, and uh, because we've mostly been working on it, and there'll be a few abstracts at this year's American Society of Nephrology meeting out of this project. Um, but it's funded by the VA, and actually not their kind of research arm, so not their uh, HSR&D arm, but by VA Innovations. It's an operational kind of project with the original idea being essentially to establish something like a registry using the VA data. Um, you know, the Veterans Health Administration is, the, is essentially the largest national integrated healthcare system. There's about 7 million active users of, of, of health care, and they, the, the VA has long standing been using uh, electronic health record data. Um, and they've, that, a lot of that data is available in a warehouse. So it's national electronic health record data. And importantly, unlike some of the other data sets, includes biochemical data, so uh, creatinine, uh, serum creatinine results that can give us a better picture of kidney function than just claims-based or diagnosis codes, although it has those elements as well. 